One UI 6 has finally made it to Samsung tablets, specifically the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Plus. Been looking forward to this update and I'm very excited to get into it. As obvious, all these updates generally, in particular One UI 6.0, One UI 5, 4, whatever, focus all of their updates on notifications, home screen, lock screen, videos, cameras, and whatever. One UI 6 is no different. It made a lot of improvements in a lot of those areas. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to point out some of the major ones, some of the more compelling changes that I am enjoying with One UI 6. But before we dive into all of that, if you're new to this channel, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, hit that like button as well. All right, let's jump into this video. Once again, folks, thank you and welcome back. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I am Jamoka from Sounds Nerdy. Let's dive into One UI 6.0 running on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Plus. All right, I am on my Galaxy Tab S9 Plus tablet. I'm going to show off the changes in One UI 6 running on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Plus. So let's jump in here and look at some of the changes. So let's jump into here. I'm not going to go over all of the changes in One UI 6. We're going to point out some of the, the bigger changes, some of the ones that I think were more impactful. So let's jump right in. First off, let's take a look at the Quick Panel. The Quick Panel has gone a number of upgrades here. First off, you can see the icons here up the top here, your you know, quick settings that you normally want to get to. When you swipe down to get to the settings here, you will also notice that your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth buttons have been taken out of the quick panel here and given their own separate icons right here. So you can easily assess those and make the changes that you want to in regards to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can still make changes to the quick panel, editing the icons, moving things around as you would in a previous version. Also, the brightness control seems to be more accessible than the previous versions. Although comparing to the previous version, it does appear that it is in the same location. I'm assuming Samsung meant that it's probably more prominent than before, but that is also one of the changes that they are referencing in One UI 6. Moving on, you can now access the quick panel in a couple of different ways. So let's make a couple changes here. So there's a new option here for quick settings, instant access. This allows you to access the panel by two ways. The first, which is the old way. If you swipe down with two fingers from the top, you will instantly get to the quick panel here, access to all your settings and your icons. Or if you do one finger, it will get to your notifications. Then you drag down again, that will get this to your settings. Now there's an option to toggle that on and off. So now if I have that on, if I swipe down from the right side of my screen, I will instantly go to the settings panel. And if I drag from the left side of the screen, I will get to my notification. So let's see that in action. So again, not two fingers, just one finger, swipe down. Swipe down, now I'm actually at my settings right here. So now if I go and swipe from the left side of the tablet, now I get my notifications again. That is a new change here. Let's take it back to the old setting just to see how it used to work previously. Again, toggle that off. Now, if I swipe with one finger here, I get my notification, swipe again. Takes me to my quick panel settings. Swipe two fingers, now it takes me there. So again, with that option there, instead of having to swipe down with two fingers or swipe once and swipe again, I can automatically set that to swipe from the right hand side of my tablet to get to my settings or swipe from the left hand side of my tablet and get to my notifications. Another improvement in the quick panel is album art. So as you see here, I have a YouTube video playing in the background. You can see here now it will display the cover art for the YouTube video that you are actually watching at the moment. You can also see the scrubber here has a little wavy icon, wavy motion while the video is playing. If I pause it, then it just settles down and scrubber moves to the current location. Hit play again, it just goes back to, to that animation, which is a nice change as well. Also, if I have Spotify running as well, I can, I will get that album art for Spotify as well. As you can see here, it will display that for the current song that I am listening to or podcast that you're watching as well. So that is a pretty 
cool new update for One UI 6. Gives you a little bit more visually appealing for your multimedia that you are actually engaged in at the moment. Going back to notifications here, then now the notifications have their own separate cards for each one. Before they were a little bit more stacked on top of each other. Now they are separated out as you can see here. They all have their own little individual circle around them. So a little bit more separated so you can easily distinguish between the notifications between each application that you have notifications for. And the notifications seem to be a little bit more vibrant according to what Samsung is saying is new in One UI 6. Um, you can display the icons for each of your notifications. Although when I went into the settings and toggled that, I didn't get much of a change in the way the notifications themselves look. Um, there is an option for that here to go to advanced notifications, show app icons and notifications. Now if I toggle that on and I go here, it still looks the same if you ask me. I don't see much of a difference when I toggle that. So I'm not quite sure what Samsung is referring to in that regard here. But the big change about those is each notification does have a separate card now. It gives it a little bit more separation for each notification. Another change with notifications, I can actually sort how my notifications are displayed. Previously, your notifications would sort by priority. Now I have an option to set them by priority or by time. So right now they're set by priority. So messages will appear on top, looks like followed by emails and then other applications. So if I want to say, I want to see my most recent notifications at the top, I hit time, go back there. Now my new notifications now appear on top and then it goes down in chronological order to my oldest notifications. So that is a welcome change as well. All right, back to the home screen. There are a couple of changes that they make with the home screen, specifically some of the icons here. So if you had icons for your applications or shortcuts for your application, sometimes the title would wrap two lines. So they've gotten rid of that. So now there will not be any titles that wrap two lines. It's just all single line now. So you won't have to worry about your titles wrapping to a second line. Kind of cleans up the UI a little bit makes all of everything more uniform, makes all the icons more uniform. So that's a welcoming change as well. Also, let's take a look at moving or dragging and dropping your icons. Previously, when you wanted to move an icon, or you could still do it this way, you would drag an icon, you have to go to the edge of the screen to move. Now they've introduced two hands. So now I can drag with one hand and the other I can then swipe find my place that I want to put my icon and then drop it there. So it makes moving icons organization much easier than it is before having, instead of having to swipe to the end of the screen, I can then just swipe with the other hand, quickly drop my icon where I want it to and voila, you're done. Much easier operation in that regard. So let's talk about link to window. So on your previous tablets that are the older tablets eight and down, Link to Windows was not accessible before. Samsung Galaxy S9 series introduced that to the, the tablets. So if you had an S9 tablet, you did get that option for Link to Windows. But with One UI 6, they are now bringing that to all the tablets that do have One UI 6. So I think it will be coming to the tab eight and probably the sevens, whatever they support at the moment that will get One UI 6 will now get access to Link to Windows. So if you're not familiar with what Link to Windows is, it basically allows you to access notifications on your computer from your tablet. So if you have a notification that pops up on your tablet, you can then see that notification on your computer as well. Also, you can messaging as well. So if you have your messaging app, you can send text messages, send and receive text messaging on your computer via your tablet. You can also access applications on your computer from your tablet. So if I want to say, for instance, play a game on my Windows computer, I can have that application open up in a separate window, but it's still running on my tablet, but I can access that from my computer as well. Uh, let's take a look at the weather widget. So if you're like me, you live in a climate where you have 
changes to your weather pretty much every hour of the day, it's good to have some information that you know what is coming up. So they've added a, another widget for the weather where you can actually have more dynamic information about the current weather, current situation called Weather Insights. Pick that and add that there. So now it tells me what, you know, a little bit more information about what is going on. So you can see here it says rain is possible after 7 p.m., how much rain is there, and obviously the original city and what the current temperature is. So this gives you a little bit more information about what is going on with the current weather in your neighborhood. So that is also a nice new addition to One UI 6. So let's take a look at the camera. There are some improvements in the camera app. They redesigned some of the icons, streamlined the UI a little bit. Not many major or major changes here, but just a little bit of improvements here. The camera widget. So they've now added widgets where servers, if you wanted to shoot your video a specific aspect ratio every specific time, you can do that. So I would expect to see something in settings, but it's a widget, so it won't be here. It will be in your regular widgets. So again, click on here, add a widget, click on camera, and you can see here we have a new widget here called custom camera. So you just click on that, we're gonna add that to our screen here. So we're gonna come up with the settings screen here. So I'll give the name of the, the title of the widget that I want. Let's just say, I wanna go, I don't know, pro mode real quick. Type that, hit save, starting mode. Let's say I want to go pro, so now I can set that for pro. I can give it a background of a picture or whatever. I can also select where I want to save it, the pictures too, so I would hit save. So now if I wanted to start my camera in pro mode, all I do is just tap on that widget there and it'll automatically start my camera in pro mode. So I don't have to fiddle with the settings and slide over to pro mode anymore. I can just hit a button and it'll take me right there. Same thing with video. If I wanted to shoot video in a certain aspect ratio, I can set up a widget for that as well. So that will save a little bit of time of having to go through the settings and through the menus to find that particular setting that you use more frequently. You can create a widget for it, put it on your home screen and access that very quickly. All right, so still here in camera mode. So if you, again, are familiar with Android, you can swipe up to switch your cameras between the rear and selfie. So there's a, so sometimes you would make a mistake and hit the swipe button and you, you end up getting a selfie when you want your rear camera. So there's now an option to actually disable that. Swipe up and down, switch camera so I can disable that. So now I won't have to worry about inadvertently swiping up or down to switch my camera settings. So that is pretty good, I like that. All right, moving on from the camera, let's take a look at pictures or photos so now there are some changes i can make with in regards to let's say pictures here so swiping up on the bottom now gives me a couple of options where i can make changes to the picture and apply them quickly uh if this option wasn't there before you have to hunt around and get that now that is there to make it easier for you to make some minor adjustments to your current photo so sticking with the camera and video themes there is now a more powerful video editor located in the menu here. Go to studio. I can now make changes to a video that I want. This here, I already have a video that I was editing. I can click on edit here. I can now add, the timeline is updated. It allowed me to add text and graphics a little bit more easier. Uh, I can then make a change to it. I can save it. Now I can then come back to my project, say movie. As you can see here, save my movie. I can then go back into it and then make changes to it as I've just demonstrated here. That is pretty much all the major stuff that I wanted to focus on with One UI 6. There are a number of other changes in here. I didn't want to go into all the details about all of them. There are more changes like Samsung internet has some upgrades, the calendar made some upgrades as well as well as reminders smart select modes and routines smart suggestions samsung health files and a little bit more but i just wanted to point out some of the major changes that i thought that were more impactful for somebody especially like me with my workflow i think these changes are definitely a welcome sign for many one ui6 users and i hope you will enjoy those new users as well 
thank you for taking time to watch this video. Let me know down in the comment section, what changes in One UI 6 are you most looking forward to? Which ones are you actually very excited about? Let me know down in the comment section. Thank you for taking time out to watch this video. If you are new to this channel and enjoy this type of content, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And chances are, if you enjoy this type of content, one of your friends or family may enjoy this as well. So share this with them. And until the next video, guys, stay nerdy.